All right, welcome to Long Island's number one pro wrestling broadcast straight out of Indie Music TV here in Ron Konkuma, Long Island. At the board is our super producer, Matty. Matty, how are you, bud? Doing great as always. And to the right is the star of the show, Mr. Jimmy Farrow. Jimmy, how are you, my friend? Good morning. Holy hangover. What's up? Heard you're having trouble sleeping nowadays. You all right? What sleep? All I do is drink and try to sleep and drink some more. Well, sleep well, my friend, because mm-hmm. we have a new president of the United States. Oh, Let's... now I can sleep well. Oh, I'm asking oh, this you if is you can be... sleep well. This is a guarantee, huh? Oh, boy. I don't know what to think. I mean, how's he doing so far? <laughs> <laughs> so far, so good? He's already making changes. I, I heard that. Yeah, what's he doing? I'm interested to find out what from is he our guest to? what he thinks. But oh, before boy. we get to our guest, I want to thank the band that sings the theme song for the Monty and the Farrow show, Ooh. Wisteria Hall, led by the lead singer, our very own Jimmy Farrow, if Hello. anyone didn't know that. Yeah. With Along with his partner, Bart Griggs, Wisteria Hall's music can be purchased on iHeartRadio, Spotify, and Reverb Nation. Thank you. All right, uh, right after this commercial break, we're going to get right to it with the comic legend, the icon, Jackie, the joke man, Martling. We'll be right back. You need a body shop? You need engine repair? Auto excellence. Collision specialist. 631-261-6420. That's 631-261-6420. Auto excellence. Elm Logistics. For all your logistic needs, call 631-299-3595. That's 631-299-3595. Elm Global Logistics. Pride, performance, and partnerships. Jeff Quest. Graphics Design. Custom Vinyl Lettering and all your art and video needs. 516-317-8204. That's for Jeff Quest Graphic Design. All right, welcome back to Long Island's number one pro wrestling broadcast, Monty and Faro, seen every Thursday, produced out of Indie Music TV. Monty and Faro can be seen on YouTube, the Monty and Faro page, Facebook Live, the Monty and Faro page. You can be heard on iHeartRadio, Spotify, Anchor. Also seen on Twitch TV, the Monty and Faro page. And if you didn't know it, number 26 most popular pro wrestling oh. broadcast in the United States. Not bad. Not too bad, yeah. right? Okay. And if you don't have enough of us, catch us on Channel 115 mm. every Tuesday from 7 p.m. to 7.30. And then on Friday on Channel 115 from 2 a.m. to 2.30. Yeah. And on Saturday at 6 a.m. on Channel 115, uh, 6 to 6.30. That's when I go to sleep. That's when you go to sleep. Yeah, but we'll be catching Jackie And you'll be able to catch our special guest. Yeah. Mr. Jackie the Joke Man Martling, who is not in studio right now. Uh, we thought it best that with COVID going around, we could just do a quick yeah. V-mix with this legend. Jackie, can you hear me? Yes, I can, and I need there all of your sponsors. I need every <laughs> one of them. Stay away from so it. Stay away from it, brother. <laughs> Jackie, I really appreciate you coming on our show. I know it's a pro wrestling broadcast, but... Having an icon at your level, uh, nice. we could really appreciate well, you coming you, I'm glad I'm not there in your opening. I saw you guys beating the hell out of each other. I'm glad I'm not in the middle of all that. You know, oh, I'm yeah. going on mm. 35 years old. <laughs> so you got to be careful. Uh-oh. You look great, man. Careful. You look great. How are you holding up today uh, in today's world? You, <clears throat> I, you know, I'll tell you the truth. I live on the water. I got a beautiful girlfriend. Uh, I Ooh. got all the pot I could possibly smoke. Oh, I don't drink hero. anymore. My hero. So I live like a king, but the whole world is <laughs> collapsing around me. So I feel guilty saying, yeah, everything's great <laughs> because everything ain't great. Everything sucks. But as far as I'm concerned, it's terrific. Are you kidding? I got a heart on a couple of years ago. <laughs> oh, man, that's better that you already won up me already. You st- two minutes into the show, you won up me already. I hate oh. to come on the air and start bragging right away. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, let me ask you, you want to weigh in on our new president? What are your thoughts? Oh, boy. Let's put you right I, in the fire. I, I love him. And uh, oh, okay. and uh, I I didn't I purposely didn't ask about politics with anybody because I never I'm a comic. So, you know, if you say you like somebody or somebody else, all of a sudden you lost half your audience. Right. But, uh, you know, I I dislike Donald Trump from the time I met him 30 years ago. You okay. Know? He, he came oh. on the Stern show and 
when he was in the room, there was nobody else in the room. He didn't acknowledge anybody even existed. It had nothing to do with politics. He's just a dick. He's just a dick of a person. He's an entitled dick. It's he's he's got SD he, politics. He's got SDS syndrome, Jackie. Uh, shit don't stink. Absolutely. In fact, wow. I, I'm sure. I'm pretty sure he thinks he doesn't shit. <laughs> <laughs> so funny. I know a lot of people that that work on that stupid show, The Apprentice, and uh. he wears diapers. He wears. He wears the pants. He's been uh. shitting his pants for 15 years. It, no. Uh. Hey, what do you think of reality shows anyway? What's your opinion on reality shows? My life is a reality show. <laughs> you know, the, 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 the Howard Stern show was a reality show. Yeah. You know, yeah. it really was. You know, the cameras right there, you know, they're not reality shows. They're, you know, they're, it, it's all bullshit. You mm. know what I mean? That if mm. anybody ever really ran a camera, you know, they just did a documentary on me. And it's, and it's really great and really honest. And I'm just scared people are going to look at it and say, oh, wow, that's a lot of great stuff they invented or made up because mm. nobody tells the truth anymore, you know. Yeah, but you... I, don't, I don't watch any of that crap. I've never watched any of that crap, you know. Yeah. Not you know, into... Stuttering John from the show uh, lived across the street from um, Bruce Jenner. And then Jenner married Kardashian. And uh, John and his wife used to go over and have dinner with the Kardashians. And the place was a madhouse. And John's wife, Susanna, who's a dear, sweet way, they're long divorced, but she's a great girl. And she turned to them and said, man, this place is a nut house. You guys should make a, make a TV show out of this. Mm. And of course, they made $10 billion. I don't think they even bought her lunch, you know. Right. But I, all that stuff, is, you know. I know why, why do you guys do that stuff? What reality you know, maybe shows? Because I've never been. I've never been asked to be on one. Maybe if they asked me to <laughs> dance with the stars, I would completely turn around and say, "No, this is the greatest thing." You know? Well, what I what you should do, Jack, is I think maybe the reality show should be worst comics in America because everybody thinks they're a fucking comic. That's nowadays. true. That is true. Any take on that, well, Jackie? There's a lot of clowns running around. I know. Unfortunately, I'm one of them. <laughs> oh, stop! <laughs> That's a, boy, I walked you right know, into that one. <laughs> it's so funny because all the all the idiots from the Stern Show, I, I actually named them the Whack Pack, and the longer it gets from the Stern Show, now I'm actually being absorbed into being one of the Whack Pack that I named, you know. Now, I, you know, it's funny because <clears throat> I tell jokes. I'm not really a comic. I tell jokes, and I love jokes. But... Uh, when I started doing comedy, there were like 150 comedians, and I was like the only guy that told jokes, but everybody else was comics. Now there's like 150,000 comedians. I mean, mm. anybody that ever tripped over their own shoes and somebody giggled is, oh, I'm a comedian, you know. Do you feel fortunate so about know. your? Do you feel fortunate about your timing? You know, was it the right time? You know, you're back I in the was, day when you I got was started. Very lucky. I was very lucky. Uh, but luck favored the prepared. I did my homework mm. and I did a lot of work and really broke my balls. I was around a long time. I was I was 38 years old before I got my first paycheck from K Rock. Okay. From the radio, you know. So mm -hmm. I paid my dues. I was around, you know. But you know what? If nothing had to happen, I still would have done the same crap. You know, you just you, you don't go after something. You just do what you're doing, hoping something bumps into you. You know. Sure. Sure. So, I gotta, yeah, I got lucky. But, you know, a lot of people say, oh, you're so lucky. You know, it's funny. People say, uh, you know, what would have happened to you if you hadn't ran into Howard Stern? And I say, what would have happened to Howard if he didn't run into me? Mm. That's you a know, great point. Like, That's he, a great he, point. I absolutely helped him. You know, there's yep. an old yep. story about it, about Hillary Clinton. And uh, somebody said, to, yeah, you're doing all right, but you're married to the president of the United States. What if you were married to a gasoline pumper? Yeah. And she said, then he'd be president of the United States. <laughs> you know, it was, you know, think about it. You know, everybody helped. Now, what are you guys? Are you guys wrestlers? No. Well, well maybe he's wrestling size. Look at me. What are you talking about? Well, I, I can't see nothing. Oh, all okay. All I know is you're wearing sunglasses. That's, well, well when, 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 you, when you look back, so we... Uh, we uh, grew up on Long Island, yeah. like you did, 
right? You grew up on Long Island. I'm still growing up doing a lousy job of it, but go on, Mike. Go on. So childhood friends in high school. Yes, uh, yes. My partner here turned me on to pro wrestling. Yes, in junior high. And the bus uh, then life goes on. We all do our own thing. And then a couple of years ago, I was asked to be a guest for what reason on some dude's I radio still show. Yeah, we still And then know. all of a sudden, here we are with this wrestling show. And we were just doing it for shits and giggles, Jackie, but... Uh, it started getting a life of its own and yeah, became pretty popular. So, well, congratulations! That's good. You know, you. I'm so old. <laughs> like my parents were big drinkers, and they would go across the street and they'd leave me at home with my stupid uh, TV dinner, my Swanson TV dinner that I was a big boy <laughs> and I could put in the oven and heat up. You love Swanson <laughs> TV dinners. And, <clears throat> I'd sit there in my easy chair and watch hours and hours. Live from Sunnyside Garden, live oh. from Comac Arena. Oh. I mean, I watched hours and hours hey. of the Graham Brothers and Anthony Naraka and Arnold okay. the Golden Boy. Okay. And uh, Bru- Bruno Kowalski with the claw hold, Bruno, Bruno Sammartino. All those guys, I knew all of them inside out. The midgets, I used to go crazy. <laughs> and I, was, I, would, I sat there for years watching this crap, for the most part alone. <laughs> And it was totally entertaining, like three feet from the screen, burning my retina, watching. And then one day, I don't know whether I was in third grade or in 12th grade, but at some point, somebody <laughs> leaped off the turnbuckle and came down on another guy's head with his knee. Okay. And I said, wait one minute. That would have killed him. I turned it off. I never watched it again. Oh. I said, you know, these guys have been, guys been bullshitting me for five oh. years you know. Oh uh, yeah, I mean it's it's great theater. I love it. I, you know, it's it's a, it's a beautiful dance. You know, they Jesus they, Christmas. They no longer uh, have that that it's real stuff going on. You realize that they did admit it. The business, the business did did openly admit that it's uh, staged. So you can come back if you want. <laughs> if you want to- you know, I, I did get a kick out of it, man. Haystacks, Calhoun, Happy oh Humphrey. Yes. Okay, okay. Oh, my God. 601 so pounds, fun. four asses, Haystacks, Calhoun. Right. That was huge. Jackie, right. I wanted, I wanted was, to... Happy Humphrey was 750. Oh, yeah. Oh, my. He was, he was even bigger than Haystacks. But I oh never God. went to a lot. I always wanted to go... I wound up being good friends with Jerry Cooney, and I went to some boxing matches, but I never went to a wrestling thing. Okay. And, you know, Okay, so there's you know. episode there's episode one of the reality show, Monty and the Pharaoh take Jackie the Joke Man to a wrestling well, match. Jackie, once COVID clears up, you come in the <laughs> studio, get to meet all these guys. And so, uh, you know. I, but they, I, they'd I, probably I, be in awe. They'd probably be in awe to meet with you. That's first, true. So, that uh, is true. Yeah, Jackie, they're all, they're all dead. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Jackie, when you were on the show, if I could say as a fan of the Howard Stern show, I thought it was the best time period. Personally, when Jackie was on the show, what? Uh, what drove you to be a comedian in the first place? So, was it? How does it come about? Uh, you know what? <clears throat> That's a great question. I was never a comic, and I never had any intention okay. of becoming a, a comic or a comedian. Hmm. But only because I didn't know that was something you could choose. I, you know, when you really? don't know, you don't know. I always thought that to be in show business, let alone be a comedian. You were like touched from above, or it was some kind of divine thing. I remember so distinctly <clears throat> when I was in a band in college, and the drummer in my band was this heavy set Latvian guy, not too not too good on the eyes, pretty ugly, really <laughs> sweet guy, and we just got to I just got to know him and I said, Nick, what's your major? And I said, still remember how it hit me. He said, Radio and TV. And I thought, what are you, a moron? You don't, you don't get to choose that. Mm. <clears throat> that chooses you. And, and I, all of a sudden I realized it's a learned thing. You can learn about radio. You can learn about television. You can go into the industry, whether or not you get plucked out to be an actor or whatever. But uh, I never realized it was a choice. Hmm. But my whole life I told jokes and told jokes and told jokes. But not with any intention of ever doing it for any other reason but to make people laugh i organically love to tell dirty jokes i like to tell jokes but dirty jokes make people laugh harder and i just always had done that and when my rock and roll band broke up at the end of the 70s well the only thing i knew was i wasn't going to get a job so i just started i continued telling my stupid jokes on stage and i never turned around and looked back and made my own records the whole deal you know Jack, you have Jack, a rock and roll band? I, I had a band. We played the entire 70s all up and down Long Island. We 
drove around in a 1955 bright yellow Cadillac hearse. <laughs> <laughs> How was, the pay, how, was the pay, how was the how was the how was the pay back in those days at the local Long Island clubs? Because I I served my time doing it in the band in the '90s, so I'm just curious. What you guys get for a night back in the '70s? Oh, I I think <clears throat> I think well it 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 got better as the years progressed. But what two I remember, two beers and a handshake? I mean, what? what <laughs> yeah, well, I remember we we um, auditioned at this place and I called the Neptune Pub. Okay. And Uncle Vinny loved us. And he had the East Meadow Neptune Pub and he had the Massapequa Neptune Pub. And he said, I want you guys to be here on Tuesdays and I want you to be at the other club on Thursdays. All right. The and house I remember band. it was nice. it was eighty bucks a night, forty okay. bucks a piece. Nice. And we went All back right. to Oyster Bay where we're from and went to the local bar and sat there and got drunk. And it, it was a long story. We we actually auditioned on another band's equipment. And our stuff was out in our hearse. And since they were auditioning before us, no sense changing over all the equipment. So we auditioned on their equipment. We got the gig. They didn't get the gig. Oh. And we went out to the hearse, and they, somebody had broken in and stole our speaker columns. Oh. So here we are, drunk. We got a job two nights a week. We lost our stuff. We're so pissed off. We go back to Oyster Bay, and we're sitting there at the bar. And we're bragging to Billy Nastry, the bartender. Yeah, we look, we're working musicians, man. Look at us. We're working two nights a week. <laughs> we're, we're, we're hitting it big. Blah, blah, blah. We're so excited. And a few minutes later, the people next to us left. And he said, you fucking assholes. He says, do you know who you were sitting next to? We're like, no. And it was Billy Joel and his wife. Oh. <laughs> I mean, he wasn't. He only had, at that point, he had only put out Piano Man, but it was a national yeah. hit. Yeah. And he, he was already uh -huh. big stuff. But we were so much in our own world, you know. <laughs> we weren't even paying attention. It was so funny. You assholes, you know who that was? Uh, that was so great. So great. Unbelievable. Who but did you play? Was I think we went, wound up getting up to $100, maybe $100. You know, and then you okay. go a gig somewhere else for $200. Right. There but you it go. Was, it was horrible pay. Yeah. Oh, I, yeah. You know? Oh, yeah. I know everything was much, much cheaper. I, I know I never missed a meal. You know, I don't know how much we stole or begged or borrowed. You know, we right. lived in my parents' basement. You know, right. it's rock and roll. You do whatever you got to do. You know. w was the musician life a little bit of a kind of like a training? Because you become a comedian and now you, you know, it's... Nah, it's, it's you it, know, it, we weren't really, you know, we were, we were guys who played guitar that wanted to get laid and wanted to <laughs> smoke pot and wanted to get drunk. You know, we were a two-man band. We told dirty jokes. We played our own songs. We were incredible fun. But I used to tell jokes between songs, and then the two of us started telling them a real lot of jokes and a real lot of jokes. And that's what broke up the band, because him and the other guy, we added a third guy, and then they decided they didn't really want to do the joke thing. And I said, well, I'm mm. going to do it. you know. So they left. So I started playing guitar by myself and telling my jokes. <clears throat> but uh, it was a weird transition. The whole first year I was a comedian, I had a ponytail. Mm -hmm. You know, when you're a comic, you know, you walk on stage, they know in 10 seconds whether or not they like you. Right. You walk up there with a ponytail, they already hate you. <laughs> they you know? don't yeah, like without, you. Without, 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 that's for sure. <laughs> I, I didn't give a fuck. I could have told you. But I got you. real lucky, you know. I, I started producing <laughs> some shows, and uh, uh, the, I'm sure you heard of the brokerage. Mm -hmm. Of course. Was, uh, I played there, yes. Well, that was called, yes, that sir. Was called Corky's Music Box, and okay. then Gary Smith bought it and turned it into the brokerage, which mm -hmm. was a which was a, a, a music venue, and then yes. he yep. had me come in, and I made it into a comedy venue. Nice. And then a couple nice. months later, me and my uh, soon-to-be wife took over Governors. Okay. So I was booking Governors in the brokerage for a long time and making a lot of money, and I wasn't especially a great comedian, but I made a record because I knew how to make a record. So I had my own record. Six months after I became a comedian, I, I had my own album. What, was, know, which, the, what was the name of that first nice album? Which card. Jackie, what's the first it's name? Called what, it's called What Did You Expect? Wait, wait a second. Hey, that's pretty hey, funny, Jackie. Hey, so hey, just hold on a second. I know we're on a little bit of delay, but the owner of the station <laughs> yeah, yeah, has, right. ha, the has the album, and he wants to send it to you. It's still wrapped. Uh, Chris Patty, the owner it actually of the Music is. TV. It's still wrapped. It's still wrapped. Have you looked, have you looked at it? We, I started looking at it, but we, you know, we got on turn, a little turn early. Turn around. Let me see the back. Is Turning the back it color? Uh, it's black and white. Oh, you got the that. This is this is an original, original printing, I think. Yes, I believe it is. <laughs> it's 
and, and it's and wrapped. Does it feel? Does it feel thick? Does it feel like there's something yeah. in it? Yeah. Oh yeah. Hey, wait a minute. <laughs> it doesn't feel thick. The, Hold on the, a second. The Colorado <laughs> number system is in there. But look close. <laughs> have you not looked at the front? Have you not looked at it? We didn't have a chance to look at well, it. Just I don't have my glasses right on, now. so I'm blind. So, so Mike, help me out. At it right now. So there's uh, three young gentlemen with the Vernon School, East Norwich, Long Island, November 1961. Yeah. Okay. Are you the guy in the middle with that uh, striped jacket on? Is that you? Yeah. Now look a little closer. All right, I'm looking closer. What am I supposed oh, I to I wish see? I could see. Sorry, Jackie. Oh, you're giving the finger, Jackie. Is he really? You're giving the finger. Look at him. Wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, my God. That's hilarious. What did, what, wait <laughs> a minute. That's what? why it's called, what did you expect? Oh, very oh, good. Boy. Very good. <laughs> that is awesome. You were already blazing your trail. Jackie, who are your influences uh, comedy-wise? You know, it's, uh, I, there's something slapstick about you, so I was very curious. <laughs> I, I liked everything. You know, I really okay. liked... My mother used to like, like to watch me watch Red Skelton because oh. he laughed at himself and farted around a lot. <laughs> yes. Uh, I liked the Marx Brothers, but not till oh. later on. I loved Henny Youngman because he told the stupid jokes. Yes. Uh, of course, I fell in love with Red Fox and wound up, I wound up doing a video with him, which was a major thrill. But I wasn't a guy that listened to Robert Klein or George Carlin or Shelley Berman and listened right. and memorized. Understood. I was just a guy that told jokes. I yeah. remembered every joke I ever, ever heard, and I just loved doing that. So I had no real influences other, other than just wanting to organically be funny. And it wasn't a means to an end. It was just a means to, you know, if I made 10 guys in a bar room laugh for a half hour, you know, it was like I died and went to heaven, you mm. know. Mm. Jackie, Probably what did, saved me a few dollars on beer too. <laughs> what What did mom think? Mom and dad think about your career choices? Oh. Well, if if they had ever said anything to each other or me, um, they were both every every single person in my family is funnier than me. Both my brothers, my sister, my mother, my father they were all really smart, really really funny. And uh, my mother was such a wise guy. And I used to tell Howard some of the things my mother did. And they, you know, people, you know, all you know is what you know. Like, I grew up in this family. I didn't know that everybody's family wasn't like mine. Like, if I was walking around and my zipper was open, my mother would point down and go, look, it's Ever Ready Eddie. <laughs> when I'm six years old. Oh, my God. Years old, you know? My father used to tell me there was a like draft that. in the room. <laughs> he looked down his draft. <laughs> there you go. There you go. They, like, they, what? They, they're all having fun, right? But uh, the family was funny, and they know, there was no discouragement, you know. But uh, That's great. They drank a lot. My old man really drank a lot in the 60s. and uh, and But I grew up in, you know, I was in college in the late 60s. You know, it was, you know, tune in, turn on, drop out, and acid, and pot, and, you know, it's so funny because people nowadays, you know, like I'll say to somebody who's like 18 years old, do you want to get stoned? And they'll go, no, man, I quit when I was 13. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, oh my God. Because when I was growing up, it wasn't how old were you when you started smoking pot. Right. It was where were you in 1967? Oh. Because, okay. you know, I was a sophomore in college, and that's when I started smoking pot. You know, you put on Jefferson Airplane and get stoned. Nice. But before that, you know, the what just wasn't pot. People didn't smoke it. It was around here and there. You know, the jazz musicians had it for decades. But as far as being in the in the general s scheme of things, it wasn't until you know sixty seven, sixty eight, sixty nine. The whole world, you know, woke up to pot. It's it's been it's been a pretty interesting ride. You know. Yeah. That. Yeah, and New York still hasn't legalized it fully. But I'm waiting. I'm trying to be patient about this. I don't know. I, yeah, I don't. Yeah, I, I, I never cared, you know. I've never. Uh, well, I'm with you, know, you on that, but I find it ironic that the very state that held Woodstock still hasn't figured it out, and some of the other states have. So. <laughs> yeah, no, that, that that does make you nuts. You know, some of the, <laughs> it's the kinda... most straight laced places in the world. You know. Ah, really, but no you know, who cares? You know, who cares? I just I just smoke pot whenever Bes I want. Besides, and care. besides taking advantage of the drugs in the '60s, which I commend you for, by the way, I hope you did go and see a lot of those great bands back in those days. Were you able to see Jimi Hendrix or The Doors or anybody like that from that time period? Uh, I never saw Hendrix live or The Doors. We we did go to the Fillmore East to see okay. the Jefferson Airplane. Nice. And nice. Uh, we had a huge concert at Michigan State with uh, 
Mountain, and so that was so long ago that the name of the group was Rod Stewart and the Small Faces. Wow, wow. there you go. And uh, <laughs> sure, and Chicago sure. and the Jefferson Airplane were all on the same bill. It was like our own mini Woodstock Fantastic. at Michigan State. And uh, you know, I, I saw the Grateful Dead at Michigan State before they became the Grateful Dead. There was a, a there was an incarnation of the Grateful Dead. Warlocks, a, a, a band. But no, but they're actually called the Grateful Dead, and they played at Michigan State. And it was like oh, wow. eight of us in the audience. Okay. And then, like all of a sudden, like two years later, I don't know if they regrouped or whatever, and became that whole traveling mm -hmm. monstrous thing. I didn't really, you know, tap into that. Right. But uh, right. And, but I'll tell you, it was so exciting being on the Stern Show to meet, you know, your idols. You know, like you know James Taylor and Roger Daltrey and oh, Leslie sure. West and Clarence yeah. Clemens, and, and those guys became my friends. You know, J Joe Walsh. Right. You know, I, 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 I turned the entire Michigan State on to the Young Rascals in 1966 mm -hmm. because they, they only had a local hit. They had a song called I Ain't Gonna Eat It Out My Heart Anymore, but it was only a local New York hit, so nobody knew who they were. So okay. I'm trying to tell everybody how great this band is, and all of a sudden, Good Lovin' went national. There you go. And all of a sudden, they were, you know. And now those guys, not, not you know, the drummer, but the other three guys are like friends of mine, you know, I... I can't believe the rascals are friends. They're friends of mine, but they're not friends of each other. They, they yeah. can't be in the same room as yeah. each other, but they yeah. can't be in the room with me. It's know. the Simon and Garfunkel you factor. You know what? Uh, it's, it's funny you brought the yeah. rascals up, Jackie. Uh, at our old studio, we since moved to this studio, the old producer actually wrote the book uh, for Life the rascals. As a rascal, the autobiography. Stephen Miller. I don't know if you had read it. Yes. It recently came What's out. What's the guy's name? Stephen Miller. He just wrote a book, uh, Life of a Rascal. Yeah. Yeah, it was. It was. Uh, uh, I, I don't know him, but I, I'm sure everybody I know knows him. Yeah. Listen, you we know. got a fan out there, Jackie uh, Jeff Rumplett, that asked, really? uh, "What was your favorite place to perform at?" <clears throat> That's a real floating thing, but uh, Rascals downstairs in West Orange at the original Rascals was like 400 people packed in, and it was just just cherry but any place that was a rectangle with uh, a decent sound system you know that just happened to be a great one club benet was the same as rascals but it was like 700 people so it was a little bit bigger club benet. so it was you know it, it, wow. it gets a little bit too big you know rascals was exactly the right size you know but anything like that you know but and you but you wind up loving them all you know i, I used to sell out the top of the riviera uh, in Las Vegas, and that was like, you know, that was insane. But that was work. <clears throat> when you got a thousand people out there, all crazy, you know, you, you're herding cattle. You know, when I was at right. Rascals, I might as well have been sitting in my bathtub. I just mowing them down and mowing <laughs> them down. You know. Over the but, years, uh, perform most of most of them was so much fun. You know. O over the years, Jackie, performing live, does it become? No, I, I saw somebody say this, another comedian say this on an interview recently. I thought it was very interesting. This, as you become established and the years go on, and now you're a veteran, obviously, of the whole business, does it become a lot easier to perform in front of people? He, the comedian termed what he called an easy night, and he said that they're all easy now that he's been doing it for so many years. Is there any truth to that? It, it, well, you know, <clears throat> it's a weird, like, it's, a, it's the same question as do you get nervous? You, you don't get nervous. You anticipate because you want to do well, you know. It's mm -hmm. funny because when you're young and starting out, you know, you're not really, what is there to worry about? And as you get more established and doing better and all of a sudden people are paying 40 bucks to see you, there's more pressure because you, you can't go out there and get away with it. you got to go out and beat the hell out of them. But that's the challenge and that's the fun and... And if you don't get a little bit of butterflies and get a little anticipative and a little bit nervous, you don't belong in the business, you know. Right, right. But it, it does, I, I guess the word easier, you could say it's easier. Well, I'll tell you. If I can explain, uh, Jackie, if I can explain like it a little further. Year, I've had times okay. where I went up on stage and I'm, all, I'm like 72 years old. And maybe maybe not this year because of COVID, but like last year, <laughs> I go on stage and I'm like, Jesus Christ, that was the best show I have ever had. Mm -hmm. Because you get better and better at it and smoother and smoother at it, you know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, 
Yeah, the, uh, the comedian wasn't so much talking about the nerves coming from his end. Uh, he was talking about the audience acceptance of him because of his earned reputation that he could go on and have an easier time than he may have had in the early days when somebody might throw silverware at him or something. Yeah, they're not going to take as many pot shots. You know? Right, right. Have, did you notice you know, that yeah, over yeah, the that's, years? That's true, okay. except with me it was always weird because I've always lived with the... At any point, any asshole can just yell, Baba Booey, you know, and I'm <laughs> fucked. You know what I mean? <laughs> I, it fuck. doesn't happen. It doesn't happen, but it's, <sighs> it, you know, it's, it's, it's like the moron's heckle. You know right. what I mean? It's like sure. somebody's sure. Like, way of telling everybody that, hey, I watched the Stern show. But that, that doesn't, never sure. really came to, to, to fruition a lot, you know? Sure. I did a show, I did a show about three years ago with um, oh, some great headliners. I, you know, uh, it, it, What's his name? Is it Billy Bordeaux? I, you know, I can't think of these guys' names, but it was like five or six pretty decently main guys. Who, Bill on, Burr? At the, no, 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 no. Oh, it's okay. not really a comic. He's oh, like okay, an actor. Okay. Uh, Bill Bordell, but Bill... Who that might be? You're, you're Mr. TV. Molly, who's Molly and me? Or, uh, uh, okay. I think I know you're talking about. Miss Molly. Okay. The, the heavy okay. guy. Martin well, the it was fan. like five... Five or six of us on this show, and it was 3,000 people there, and I had that thing like, oh, God, one, one idiot in this huge auditorium <laughs> yelling Baba Booey, you know, was, <laughs> like a room full of mousetraps going off, but uh, uh. that doesn't happen. And it, is, and it is nice, you know, I remember when you first start in comedy, uh, you know you got to work so hard, and then you understand what's going on when they say, here's Bob Hope. And he walks out, and they're going wild applauding. And you're like, you know, he, he doesn't have to earn it. He's already got that. Right. You know, and I said, look at that. They already love him. And I'll never forget, Dave Hawthorne was one of these comics I started with. It was like, you know, peace and love. And he'd been around for 10 years already. I said, look at that. Bob Hope walks out on stage, and they already love him. And he oh, goes, yeah. Jack. They already love you too. You know, you yeah, there you go. Yeah. Those guys. Yeah, you, know, they so, do. you know, it's all. It's all. It's, as, as Yogi Perra would say, it's ninety percent half mental. Yeah. <laughs> well, speaking of Bob Bob Bowie, you were a huge part of the uh, Stern show. F Recently, we had Doctor Dre in studio from Yo in MTV Raps, right? And we discussed with him uh, Scott Salem, the longtime engineer of the show. And basically, uh, I'm sure you read it, but the Post said that Howard would not Yeah, help. no, I, I, I skipped this. I don't, I, I didn't pay attention, and I don't know what happened. Right. All I was, I just was hoping that behind closed doors, uh, Howard was handing him the money to take care of everything. Right, And I just gotcha. chose to hope that that's what went down. I have no idea. They called me for that article, too. Gotcha. And I said, you know, I don't, I don't want to talk about it, because no matter what I say, Hmm. Either I'm lying or I'm bitter or yeah, uh, right. I'm making it up. You know, there's no win because if if I tell the truth and it's not controversial, what good am I? You know what I mean? So, you know. Right. Yeah, Scott's a fucking idiot and Howard's a cheap cocksucker and Gary has bad <laughs> breath and fuck everybody, you know. Well, the last, the, 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 last yeah. part, the last part's probably true. With that, we're going to take a oh quick commercial God. break and we'll be back with the comedic icon, Jackie the Joke Man. That's right, folks. Canine Corral for all your dog daycare and overnight care. Call 631-549-1544. That's 631-549-1544. And Nitro's Garage for all your automotive needs. Call 646-675-2349. That's 646-675-2349. For all your automotive needs, Nitro's Garage, ask for Jack. The Monty and the Pharaoh Show is brought to you by... Because wine is your second favorite four-letter word. California wine, New York attitude, good fucking wine. Yeah. All right, welcome back to Long Island's number one pro wrestling broadcast, Monty and the Faro, seen every Thursday, produced out of Indie Music TV in Ron Conkham in New York. Mm. Welcome back. 
the icon, Jackie the Joke Man Martling. Jackie. Was, was that on the level, good fucking wine, or is that a that, good that's yeah. a, that, Nope, that's a true wine. Yes, it is. They're a, they're a sponsor of ours, and yes. I got to tell you, being a guest on the show, we're going to send you a bottle wait, wait, if wait, you wait. drink wine. Jackie doesn't do wine. He only drinks Heineken's. He I drinks, don't drink wine. He just drinks but beer. I have a gig- then you're fucked. So, <laughs> it's yeah. kind of ironic because I have a gigolo service called Big Fucking Cock. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Fuck. Very nice. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Holy <laughs> wood biscuit. Oh, I can't. Do you, do you also have an escort service as a, that, what? That, that it's called? The Gaping give... Vagina, yes. The yeah, thank you. Vagina. Thank you. Uh, uh, what about us Greeks? Uh, do you have something called corn shoot? <laughs> oh, never mind. Oh. Anyway. Oh, oh, my dear Lord. Uh, well, I, you know, this question's irrelevant for Jackie because it says uh, thoughts on Howard being cheap as hell. So we're right. not going to go with that one. We've already got his thoughts I'll on that. You, I'll tell but, you a great wait, story. <laughs> yeah, let's hear a great story. Uh, when I started doing Stump the Joke Man um, so long ago, there was a place in Mineola called Chuckles. There was a comedy club yes. called Chuckles. Yes. And uh, at the end of my shows, I played Stump the Joke Man. But I had recently started on the Stern Show, and people were curious. Mm. <clears throat> it was so early on that people knew nothing. They really knew nothing. Mm-hmm. And um, people had questions. Because very early on, people people would say to me, hey, I heard a rumor, Robin's black. Is that true? You know what <laughs> I mean? It was, it was that early on. And Howard used to tell everybody that he was half Jewish and half Italian because that would get him all along Long Island listening to him, you know, because they're all the Jews and all the Italians. So he's sure. half Jewish, half Italian. Okay. And But as time goes on, you know, people start thinking about what's going on. And I did my show at Chuckles, and, and I said, listen, let's play Stump the Joke, man. You can ask me a joke, but if you want to ask me about, you know, comedy or if you want to ask me about the Stern Show, whatever you want to ask, I'm wide open to it. And this guy stood up and he said, is Howard really half Jewish? And I said, yes. And he said, what's the other half? <laughs> and I said, even more Jewish. <laughs> oh. oh, boy. 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 It was the funniest ad lib I ever had. The place went absolutely berserk. That is hilarious. <laughs> and that was after, you know, that was after I was on the show for six months, you know. What was it? What was it like the first conversation with Howard when he contacted you? We know we all know the story that he listened to uh, your tapes and stuff. What was that like the first time that you spoke with Howard? <clears throat> you know, nothing. It was uh, what happened was I put out an album and then I put out another album and then I put out another album, and I had three comedy albums, and I had cassettes that matched them, and my. Uh, she was my girlfriend at the time. Me and Nancy sent out packages to everybody we met. If I met you, I sent you. I don't know where you, that guy got the album, but I probably ran into him somewhere. Or maybe he bought it at a gig, and that's where he got the what did you expect. Mm-hmm. Then when I put out my second album, I would send both albums. You know, like if you guys said, oh, we got a wrestling podcast, or we got a wrestling show. Oh, give me your give me your business card. I'll send you my comedy records. I mean, I sent them forever and before I even had records. We used to send cassette tapes of our band. I mean, I've always been a madman with this promotion crap. And then I had three albums out in 1982. We had three albums out, and we sent them to everybody. Nancy and me packed up three albums, three cassettes, and all our promo, and sent them to so many people. And in those days, like the albums cost money, the cassettes cost money, the postage costs money, sure. the cardboard, the pack them in. Cost, but I just, I don't know what I was on my way to, but I was working my ass off, working my ass off. And then I got governors because they like 922 wine. My, my joke line that is a whole other complete different tale, but 516 922 wine is still going. That created comedy on Long Island. And I was working down in DC, and this guy said, hey, you should co- contact this guy. He just got fired from the radio, and but he's moving to New York. They hired him for WNBC in New York, and I bet you he'd love you. So I got home, and just like we sent him to a million people, me and Nancy sent the three comedy albums and the cassettes to Howard Stern, care of WNBC AM. I never heard of the guy, didn't know from radio. You know, I drove around listening to the Eagles on cassette in my car. <laughs> I was a hippie, played songs. I listened to my own music. I listened to the Eagles. I listened to Chicago, you know. 
Sure. And we sent the stuff. And a couple of months later, I mean, I think I think he went to came up to New York in like September or October. And this was February. And by this time, uh, me and Nancy are living in a rented house. But the first joke land, my first actual, you know, what I call joke land is where I operate out of was in my mother's attic. Mm. And I was sitting in my mother's attic and the phone rang and Nancy says, hey, that this jockey, Howard Stern, just called. He wants you to call. I said, all right. So I called NBC and I said, I want to talk to Howard Stern and return his call. He got right on the phone and he said, hey, listen, we listen to your records. We think you're funny. And we're uh, we're having a talent contest on the radio today uh, over the telephone. People are going to call in and, and, and perform for us. Do you want to come in and be one of the judges? And at the time, I'm working at Governor's in Levittown, and this is New York City, Rockefeller Center. It was yeah. a pretty easy answer, you know. So I sure. said, well, I'll be right there. And I drove in, and it's so funny because I walked in, and it was Howard and Robin and Fred. And I sat down. And that's exactly who was there the last day in 2001. The last day I worked there was Howard and Robin and me and Fred. Wow. But I walked in there and sat down, and I never really did radio before. I'd get interviewed once in a while <clears throat> when I was doing a gig, but not even a lot because I wasn't that famous yet. And it's funny, I used to go on with John DeBella in, in Philadelphia, but it, it wasn't really being doing radio. I was kind of hanging out. But I walked in and sat down and just had a great time for three or four hours. And at the end of the show, Howard said, man, you're a lot of fun. Why don't you come back next week? I said, sure. So I came in once a week for free for three years. <laughs> wow. What? So, so I, I paid my dues. I paid my dues. You sure did. Hey, Jackie, slowly but surely, slowly <coughs> but surely, passing them notes and ideas and making them funnier. And then uh, he got fired and hired at K-Rock. And then when he went to the mornings at K-Rock, I joined the show, and then pretty soon I was on full time, and we went to Pluto. Yeah. That simple. That you did. Jackie, uh, fan Bon Lewis out there says, you have a degree in mechanical engineering from Michigan State. Mm. Do you miss doing anything in that field? <clears throat> uh, no, for one very good reason. Uh, I never did anything. The only thing I did in that field <laughs> was uh, I actually – Dropped out of college in spring of 69 like everybody else, and I failed a bunch of courses. And uh, I missed a, a whole uh, one of the trimesters because I had uh, wrecked my leg in a drunken spree. <laughs> and then I met a beautiful girl, and we were going to move in together. I said, well, if I'm going to move in with her, I got nothing else to do. I might as well go back to college. So I went back to college. But here I was in 1970. I was in the engineering building at Michigan State. You know, with my blue jeans rolled up, with bare feet, with a ponytail, with my dog. And here's everybody else has got a pencil protector with their pencils in it and their white shirts. And meanwhile, they're copying off my, my test. You know, I'm taking atomic physics and mechanics. And, and uh, you know, I was so I was very smart. You know, I was good in math, good at calculus, good at but I never did it with any intention of ever. Doing that, you know, we'd be sitting there in class and one guy say, hey, yeah, I just uh, I just did an interview with Ford. I'm going to be starting in November. You know, I get my own car and 35 grand a year. Oh, yeah. Well, you know, they're giving me a place to live and down in, in Delaware. But yeah, 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 yeah. And they all, you know, because they're interviewing and everybody's getting these great jobs. And I'm like, all I know is I ain't doing that. You know, so I stayed around for two more years in East Lansing, Michigan, playing rock and roll. So, it, you know, I graduated in five years, but I stayed seven. And I still have that diploma. But uh, I told people in my show, I say, you know, I, I use my diploma to roll pot. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> it's a pretty large rolling but paper. Say it's, not, it's just not just a, just not, not a goof. <laughs> you know, I really did. Uh, you know, I had my, I had my diploma framed in, in glass, you know, and I rolled pot on it. And it was, and it was kind of fun, you know. Nice. <laughs> But uh, I just played music and wrote songs, and I wasn't any good at it, but, man, we had fun. You That's know. all. Mr. Big wants to tell you that, oh, Mr. Big. He's a con that you're a consummate comedian and the funniest guy since Buddy Hackett. That's Ooh. a pretty big compliment. Wow. 
Fuck Buddy Hackett. <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> no, you know, I'll tell you, after the first Friars roast I went to, we all went back to the Friars. And I was sitting next to Buddy and Henny and the whole gang. And we're, we're all fooling around. And all of a sudden I realized, you know, I'm not like some kid that's just a fly in the wall here. I'm part of this gang. You know, I'm you contributing go. and being funny. And I'm like, wow, I belong here, you know. Was there ever a particular... Fun. Buddy's, son, Buddy's son, Sandy, actually... Uh, this is a fit, not a good friend of mine. I haven't seen him in 10 or 15 years, but he's a good guy, you know. Was there ever a particular comedian that you got to meet where you really did, like, lose your mind, like, you know, you know, secretly, like, oh, my God, I've always wanted to meet this one? Or any particular guest that came on the show that made you really... What is really crazy is the answer to that is yes. Okay. And, and it was Rodney. And I wound up giving him his best joke ever, and I Rodney wound up going away with him. Okay. It was like... It wasn't like I had people that I liked, but I got to hang out with this guy. I mean, this is the guy that I thought was the greatest because he's joke, 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 joke. Yeah. No time in between. No fucking <laughs> around. Joke, joke, Relentless. Joke. And, yeah. and then uh, he bought some jokes for me, and then I wound up going away with him. And that, every second of the two weeks that we're on the road were, were like, you know, just stellar because he was just such a character. You know, I mean, there's, there's other people that, you know, well, your jaw drops a little. You know, it's great to meet Roger Daltrey. I, but, mm. you know, we, uh, oh, yeah. when we were in England, we, we were sitting there at the Princess Trust concert. We actually broadcast for a whole week from Abbey Road Studios, which oh. is, I, wow. I, I mean, pinch me, right? Yeah. And then we yeah. went to the Princess Trust concert, and we're sitting up in the, in the catacombs interviewing people before the show, and the fucking Bee Gees... Oh. sat across the table from us and sang a cappella. Oh, my wow. God. And I'm, I'm like, you, you've yeah. got to be kidding me. Yeah, you've this arrived. This cannot be happening. It you was, know. and you've arrived, Jackie. Yeah, that happened if you sat there and watched it. Oh, my God. Jackie, <laughs> wow. once, you got, once you got super popular, how wow. easy was it to pull trim out there? What? <laughs> <laughs> well, I was married the whole time. So oh, yeah. Oh, well, if you weren't married. <laughs> no, but the you know what the truth of it is? The truth of it is, <laughs> what's really funny is, uh, this, the old story is the worst musician okay. that plays bass yeah. in the worst band yeah. in the worst Holiday Inn <laughs> in the middle of nowhere. Gets tons of The flip. chicks come up and give them... <laughs> Their underwear and the hotel keys. <laughs> yeah. But meanwhile, the best comedian in the world comes off stage at Carnegie Hall, oh, no. and a woman comes up to him and points over and says, "My husband thinks you're funny." Oh, <laughs> that's that's wow. the pussy story for you wow. know for the comedian. I mean, got, of course, there were girls. The girls that chased the Howard Stern show, you know. He would talk about these women on the air, and people would be like, wow, their minds. And meanwhile, my God, you know, most of the girls that came in and took their shirts off, we were like, me and Fred are like, put it on, put it on, you know. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, you know, and it, there was stuff you could do, you know, but mm. it, it, it wasn't, you know what, it, it kept me honest because there was no way, even if I wanted to, I, I couldn't have got away with anything. If I if I fucked some girl, she wouldn't even let me finish because she'd be so busy getting to the phone so she could call Gary and tell him that she just fucked Jackie, you know. Oh my God. So it kind of, I kind of you know I was I was a victim of my own circumstance. Yeah, but you know. circumstance. Oh my God. Circumstance. <laughs> but that was that was great though, you know. But How? what was really great is the whole world thought. You know, I would be in the Grand Central Parkway on the way home, caught in, uh, you know, in construction traffic, and and the Stern Show made it, made New York a small town. It would mm. that that was what amazed. Like if I was late sure. in the morning, all the cars around me, you idiot, you asshole, they're waiting for you. What are you doing? You know? And I'd be in the, coming home at twelve o'clock noon with the with the windows open in traffic, and. Like, the guy next to me wouldn't say, wait a minute, are you Jackie? Are you that guy from the Stern Show? Hey, do I know you? They'd look over and nonchalantly say, what'd she look like? And i go, ah, you know, the Howard made her sound a lot better than she was. Ah, that's what I thought. Like, mid-conversation. Like, he'd been my, like he'd been my <laughs> friend my whole life, which I just thought was so... <laughs> I, that, that was the greatest thing. It made New York, it made New York a village, you know. It was yeah. great. 
Yeah. But uh, that, that was the one, everything that happened on the show really happened. There was nothing made up like, hey, you pretend this and I'll pretend that. The only thing that was made up is if he said a girl was a nine, uh, she was more like a point nine. <laughs> no, she's <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, putrid. Hey, Jackie, oh. Jackie, if you could do it all, all over again, would you still want to be a comic? If I could do it all over again, I'd do it all over your girlfriend. Oh, Not my God. girlfriend, man. You don't even know what she looks Holy like. Spoo. Trust me. Yeah, really. Dude. That's, a, that's a blind <laughs> assumption no, on not, Jackie's part. I would not change. I, I've been asked. I, mean, I would not change as far as my, my life and what I did growing up. And I did some foul things and some stupid things and <laughs> high school and college and the Stern <laughs> Show and, and, and leaving. And all. I would not change anything of course that's a ridiculous question because you can't change anything right and uh right but but no i wouldn't change anything people uh, go oh you fucked up your life when you left it if i hadn't have left the stern show i might have been i might have been dead a month later you know i'm not yeah. that I had such a drinking problem hmm. but all you have to do is get drunk on a saturday night and fall asleep on the way home right or hit you know, god forbid you know kill other people you know like so i did you know i i I left the show, I got divorced, quit drinking, and moved into a house on the beach by myself. Hmm. You know, people, oh, Nancy left Jackie when he lost his job. No, we were long divorced. Hmm. Uh, we just hadn't gone through it yet. You know, we're still, she's still like one of my very, very best friends. She lives a st like two doors away from me here, you know. But I wouldn't change nothing. I, would, I quit drinking. I would have never quit drinking if I was still on the show, hmm. you know, until I ran into a tree, you know. Did you feel, no. pri did, you know, to me, you were kind of like, really, when I think about this, you were, you were kind of the rock star of that show. It's interesting that you started out as a musician, but then you became, you know, a comedian. You, you wind up on Stern, and what I'm getting at is, is, Mike, I saw this awesome, you know, episode the other night on YouTube where, the, where Jackie walks in and they're giving him a breathalyzer. Yeah, I'm sure you remember this, Jackie. I mean, was it, what was it no, like? I think they might have done them. Did what I, was it? Mean, what what was mind? it? What was it? What was it like? Like you know, you know. Basically, to me, you were basically the rock star. How would How would fed off this shit when you would come in all, you know, hung over well, from I, a long I, night I, of summer? I was living a, I was living a life. You know, right. I, I was out there living it. You know, when I started on that show, uh, they used to make fun of me mm. because uh, Howard and Robin and Fred and Gary knew everything about every Munsters episode and every Partridge family <laughs> and Brady Bunch and they knew hey, all the minute. stuff and and I didn't know any of it and they thought what are you an idiot what are you raising a closet I'm like no you guys were sitting with your mother watching fucking television I was out drinking smoking pot fucking girls playing rock and roll I was living. I was out living my life while you guys were watching the Brady Bunch. Oh, right. Look at Jackie. He doesn't right. know that episode. No, I don't know that episode. <laughs> Fuck no, I don't know. You know. I actually wound up making hilarious. a movie where I got to make out with Mrs. Brady. Oh, are you kidding? Really? What's no. the name of that movie? I got to see that. Well, look at you. Was this bathroom you material for you? Yeah, what are you talking yeah. about? It's good don't point. tell him, Jackie. Don't tell him. Oh, my God. Venus <laughs> Venus and Vegas. Oh, Venus and Vegas. Wow. Venus and Vegas. It sounds so stimulating. Great. Oh my God, Jackie, oh, Jack, so, uh, so Jackie. Fun. We got about one more minute. Oh. Um, fan out there, Bart G is asking. Hey Bart, can you tell? Uh, can you give the? Can you do the Rodney? Give Rodney a no, chance. No, I will joke. tell you. If somebody would like to hear that joke, you can email me. <laughs> Jokeland at AOL.com. It's too long to fit in with one minute to go. I'll tell you a great COVID joke. Let's okay. hear it. And tell him uh, to give Rodney a chance. That used to be what you heard when you went to my website, but that the website changed. Okay. But I'd be glad to send it to anybody. Jokeland at AOL.com. But Fair the COVID enough. joke is uh, the guy goes to his neighbor's house and knocks on the door. And the neighbor answers and he says, hey, man, since, uh, since the COVID hit, I haven't seen your wife. The neighbor says, oh, she's out back in the garden. He says, well, I was just out there. I didn't see her. He says, well, you, you got to dig down a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. <laughs> oh, That's my a God. great show. <laughs> Jackie, want to thank you for coming are you, on. Are you guys married? What? Uh, oh, are you oh, married? Are we married? Yes, I'm no, married. Not to each, not each other. No, no, no not, not to, to each, each other. other. But, but you're married? I'm married, yes. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, currently, yes, yes. 
greatest married joke. The guy uh, walks in, his wife's uh -huh. watching television, and she's yelling at the screen, Don't do it! Don't go in that church! You fucking asshole! Don't go in that church! He says, What are you watching? She says, Our wedding video. <laughs> oh, that is great. Oh my God. <laughs> oh, I'm using that one. <laughs> All right, listen, I tweet jokes every day at 4 20 p.m. International Marijuana Time at Jackie Martling. I also do cameos, which are actually making me money at cameo.com slash Jackie Martling. And uh, we can do this again anytime. This is great fun. I'm sorry I couldn't come in there, but I'm 72. Damn. That virus is, is walk, walking yeah. around looking for me. Yeah. Hey, listen, you know what? It was our Understood. honor to have you on the show, and uh, I thank you for allowing us the opportunity to interview you, and uh, you're, you're, an, you're a legend. You know, I think this worked great. This might have worked better this way, because if I was sitting there, <laughs> there we go. it, it, it would have been awkward. You know, this what way, is? I was looking at both of you, and you're well, looking at me. Well, it is, a, it is a little different here, right? So it's not like you're on top of us. We come in masked up. The show starts, we take our mask off. Yeah. We're, we're pretty much away from each other. But you as the guest, you're literally about 14 feet away from us. <laughs> but not saying that you should have came in. you well, got to feel comfortable. Thing, Look, no one wants to catch this maybe disease. Maybe when this thing clears up, And Jackie, no one wants in, to take a chance know? with their life. But, uh, I, I, I give you my... Uh, I'll give you a rain check, and I will come back. Sounds all right, awesome. man. We really appreciate it, and I look forward to seeing you again. Thank you again, sir. All right, baby. Thank you. All right. Thanks, Jackie. So uh, that was awesome. That was awesome, right? Yeah, that was awesome. That was awesome. Love so the guy. Jimmy, real quick for the fans out there, uh, coming up, we had the Dutch Mantel deal. Yeah, yeah. Dutch, unfortunately, will not be in studio. Yeah. We were just speaking about COVID, and yep. the Dutch is unable to fly right. because of that particular a lot situation. Of, it's rough right now, uh, obviously. So our next show, I think, is what, Dan Severin next Dan Thursday? Severin. Yeah, Severin. Is it yep. next Thursday with mm -hmm. Dan Severin? I believe so. Um, any thoughts on today's interview, Jimmy? That was just, you know what? That was really, really fantastic. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to look fondly for years upon this interview because he's one of my faves. Yeah. And uh, I love the Howard Stern Show. Come on, Howard, that's a big staple of ours growing up. So that was an absolutely, uh, that's a classic. I was Do you think very Jackie happy. took the high road on some of the Stern questions? Sure. Really, tell the truth, I didn't. Sure. You know, I'm not a big fan of Stern, so you know. Oh, I know you're not. You know, right. I know, I know, I know. Uh, he was the best time period for that show. Oh, absolutely. That was, that's all there is to it. You know, they were magic together. Artie, uh, a close second. Artie's funny, but you know what's, as you know, you know this is the truth. I only recently even became aware of Artie and Howard. Yeah, I, I got right. off the, I don't want to sound like a mark, but I think I probably got off when Jackie got off the train. You know, that's possible. I'd have to think about that, but I, you know, I only recently became more aware of Artie's stuff. He's hilarious. Artie's very funny. Uh, great job producing, Matt. Really appreciate it. Big boy, Matty Ice. Thank you, as always. Thank and you, this sir. Is, uh, this is Long Island's number one pro wrestling broadcast. And yes, sir. We're not just pro wrestling broadcast, right? Ooh, we're a variety not. show. And no. I got to tell you, I really meant that. What an honor it was to be able to be in the same realm as yeah. such a legend like Jackie the Joker. Yeah, Man, we had a nice sure. voice box session. It wasn't like having him here, but hey. We Any, contacted the spirit of Jackie. That's it, brother. That was Any awesome. parting words for the fans out yeah, there? Just once again, as I say every week, thank you for letting us come into your living room. And until next week with the great Dan Severin, later. <laughs>